Matt Edmonds was in the Olympics in 2004. He was a marksman. And he was in the Triple Marksmanship Championship for a gold medal. And he hit every target with a bullseye. Three times as he got up to shoot, he hit the bullseye. However, there was one little time, the last time, when if he would have just hit the target, he would have got a gold medal. So Mark Emmons stands up and shoots from position number two, but shoots at target number three. It's a bullseye. But his count was zero because he shot the wrong target. Sometimes I wonder if we're not a little bit like that in our Christian life, that we sometimes just shoot the wrong target. We're looking for what we want to do, but we kind of get sidetracked by the world. That happens to all of us. Because Satan, the Bible says, is a tireless and crafty worker. He's like a roaring lion, crouched, seeking whom he may devour. And when we get too close on the pathway of life, he'll snatch us away if he can. And I'm a little bit like Mark, or Matt, rather, Emmons sometimes. I get on the right place with the wrong target. Begin to focus on things that are really not all that important, but at the time, take care of what I want and fulfill my pleasure and fulfill what I want to be done. So when Paul wrote to the church in Rome in the 12th chapter, he begins that 12th chapter about our spiritual life, that our everyday life is our spiritual worship of service of worship, and then he comes right down to verse 4, and he says, since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly, a prophecy according to the proportion of his faith, if service in his serving, or he who teaches in his teaching, or he who exhorts in his exhortation, he who gives with liberality. And he who leads with diligence, and he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. What Paul is saying here is that each one of us have an individual gift from God, and the Holy Spirit gives us those spiritual gifts or gift. And how many times we say, well, I, I just don't have that gift. Uh, and we, when we do have a gift, we think it's not as good as maybe somebody else, or I wished I had their gift and not my gift. But the Bible is very, very clear that we each have a spiritual gift, and we're to realize that and exercise that gift in God's service, whatever that gift may be. But it's a spiritual gift given by the Holy Spirit. That individually, we have a now a purpose in life that we didn't have before. That we have a goal in life that we didn't have before. And when we begin to use that gift and develop that gift, God enhances it, doesn't he? And we find that if it's in serving, while we maybe started out in serving, or maybe we're hospitable, we find that we're more hospitable. In giving, as God has blessed us, we find ourselves giving more than we did before because we're exercising that spiritual gift. Or if it's in teaching, in teaching, we have some wonderful teachers here that study every week and prepare, and they go into those classrooms or into this auditorium with a message to give to each one of us. And as they teach, they grow in their teaching ability. They grow in their understanding of God's word. Or if it's an exhortation to be able to give God's word in a way that is palatable or understood so that we can apply that in our lives. I think the first thing that we need to do is accept the fact that you are gifted. You have a gift. Well, I don't have a gift. People have told me all my life that I wasn't very successful. When I tried out for sports, they said, you know, we'd like you to play on the JV team because you're not really good enough to play on the senior team. And when you get on the senior team, you're probably going to be guarding the bench and spending some time away from the game. Or maybe it's in business. 
Maybe you tried to start a business and your business wasn't successful, maybe because that's not your gift. And so you've been told all along that you're not very gifted and you probably won't succeed. And if you grew up with that idea when you were in high school and about to launch into either going to college or career school or to get a job, you think of yourself as less than what God thinks of you. God gives us a gift to be able to glorify Him in all that we do. But let me tell you something. You are a success in the kingdom of God. No matter what your gift is outside physically, you, because God has gifted you, a spiritual gift is given to you, you are successful in the church, in the kingdom, in the body of Christ, whatever that gift may be. It may be a gift of simply standing at the door as people come in and welcoming them to come in to the assembly, making them feel comfortable. Our congregation, I think, does that very well. And if I talk to visitors um, that have been here, maybe, for, and I see them in another place, they say, one thing about your congregation is they are the most friendly people. I came in and didn't know anybody, and they made me feel like I was right at home. So maybe that's your gift. Or maybe your gift is teaching. And so you step up to teach, and when you first start teaching, you find, ah, I'm not as good as, I, as I'd like to be. That's okay. God crafts that gift that you have been given so that you can become a better teacher. He helps you to understand things that maybe you didn't understand before. He gives you that gift because he wants you to flourish in the kingdom. He wants you to realize that the kingdom is successful partly because you're here and partly because you're willing to use that gift to the glory of God. Paul wrote to the Roman letter, as we said, and each one has a gift, and then he writes to the church at Corinth, and you know what his theme is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, same as Romans 12? Spiritual gifts. I want you to understand, brethren, he says, listen to this, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit, and there are varieties of ministries and the same Lord. There are varieties of effects, but the same God who works in all things, in all persons, but to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. So your gift is given to you by the Holy Spirit, and it's to do what? It's for the common good. So that the church here flourishes because you're here. It has an aspect of serving that it wouldn't have without you. It has a willingness of somebody who is part of the congregation who says, I don't have much, but what I have, I'm going to give and I'm going to strive to get better at. Because I love the church. I love the congregation. I want the congregation to grow more like a family. And when I'm here, part of the family is enhanced because I'm here. But you say, well, you just think you have a big head. That's not what Paul is saying at all. He's saying that you've been given a spiritual gift and you're to use that gift for the glory of God and for the congregation as a whole, for the church family as a whole. The special gift that God has given to you comes to you by means of the Holy Spirit. You don't need to rely on your own skills or your own abilities. God gives us those abilities. When I first started preaching way back in Orangeville, California, when I was just a young guy, they said, Dennis, we want you to prepare a lesson and to preach for us one Sunday. Well, I'll tell you what, there was no way I was prepared to do that. Didn't think I had any talent at all, and I certainly didn't know what I was going to say or how I was going to say it. But with the elders, as they worked with us as young men, they taught us that you have a gift. And you're to use that gift. One of my friends had a gift of leading singing. He didn't know he could lead singing. But when the singing was started, you could always hear him on the front. Because he just had one of those voices that, that boomed out. Everybody could hear him. And he had the ability then to lead singing. He learned how to beat time. He learned how to pitch a song. You know all those little squiggly things right at the beginning of the, of the song? 
Well, those tell us something that it's either B flat or E flat or A. And so you blow that pitch and you can start the song, the hymn with that pitch. He learned that very well. And he was able to do the do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do deal real well. I couldn't get that for all the tea in China. I just had trouble trying to understand in my head what those notes were, but he had that gift. And God blessed him with that gift, and he began to enhance it and begin to grow it, and the elders encouraged him to grow it. They sent him to singing school so he could be a better song leader. And today in the church, he's leading singing in a very large congregation. Why? Because it started with a gift that he thought was insignificant that he could sing. Or maybe it's in reading of scripture. Public reading of scripture is not always easy. And even though you may practice it, if you don't practice it out loud, when you get up to read it, sometimes it comes out completely different than, than what you thought it should be. So maybe it's a gift of reading scripture in public. Maybe it's the gift of just being an encourager to other people. I'm encouraged when I come here, we assemble together, and people encourage me and, and ask me how I'm doing. And they tell me a little bit about their life and how, about, how their week went. And I'm encouraged oftentimes by what they have to tell me. So whatever your gift is, it's given to you by the Holy Spirit to be used to enhance your part of the church family here. You don't rely on your own gifts and your own uh, your own skills, rather, or your own abilities, but you rely upon God's ability. And then secondly, we need to discover the gift that God has given us. Because I know it's easy to sit back in the pew and say, or in the chair, and say, well, yeah, that's true of other people, but I don't know what gift I have. And yet, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, gives you a gift. And so for some people, they're given multiple gifts. Not only can they teach, but they can also lead singing. Not only can they lead singing, but they can read publicly. Not only can they be an encourager, but they're going to the hospital to encourage people who are ill to get better and to be that lifting light as they walk into the room. Simple things, difficult things for some, but easy for others. Those spiritual gifts are yours and you need to discover your gift. Play, uh, players gathering for the basketball season at, at UCLA were full of encouragement. First time players couldn't wait to get out and hear their coach, John Wooten, tell them about basketball and how they were going to be a successful team. Now the ones that had been there the years before already knew what his speech was going to be, but they knew they better listen. John Wooten gathers them all together and they're listening with bated breath as to what he has to say and he tells them, I'm going to teach you today how to put on your socks. <laughs> put on your socks. They thought, well, this, 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 this can't be the John Wooden that brought all those uh, teams to success. He said it was a very valuable lesson and each time when they went out, before they went out on the basketball court, he taught them how to put on their socks so that it didn't wrinkle around their toes or wrinkle around their ankles and cause a blister right at a critical time in the game. He knew that that was something that was important for him to say and for them to learn. And I'm sure they got tired of hearing what he had to say, but what he had to say was very important. They have very successful basketball teams. That's not all he taught them, but he always began each speech with the same thing. Let me tell you how to put on your socks so they don't wrinkle up under your toes or wrinkle on your heel so that you get a blister. Paul is our coach today, and he tells us that he wants to explain to us the necessity of discovering your spiritual gift. I know we've read it in Romans. We just read it in 1 Corinthians. We go over to Ephesians 4. Paul says basically the same thing again to the church at Ephesus. Why? Because he wanted them to understand that as God blessed them with the spiritual gift, that they were to be able to develop it and use it for the glory of God. Whatever that spiritual gift is. And he lists a whole list here. 
But over in Ephesians 4, he lists other things. So this is not an exhaustive list here in Romans 12 or in 1 Corinthians 12 or in Ephesians 4. All throughout the New Testament, the Bible teaches us that we have different areas where we need to develop and we have gifts given from God. Encouraging. Remember, he told us the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness self-control. Those are gifts given to us that the world doesn't understand. They don't understand what it is to love your brother, to love your neighbor as yourself. I think sometimes we don't understand it very well either because we have the most powerful gift that the world has ever known that we can have salvation in Christ and yet we're quiet and we don't tell our neighbors or teach our neighbors or share with them the most valuable gift. If you get a brand new automobile, what do you want to do? Go and share with your neighbors. Hey, this is better than yours, and, and this is what mine does, and these are all the features. But when it comes to salvation, do we share what we know about God's Word with our neighbor? Being excited about who we are and why we're living for Christ and why that makes a difference both now and in eternity. That may be a gift that you have. And you need to develop that gift. And I appreciate uh, Estelle McMaster so very much by always being willing to share. And to step up and say, I don't know all the answers, but I'll be a good listener. <clears throat> Boy, that's a talent. Being able to be a good listener. And listen to what people are saying. Not that you always have a ready answer, because I don't. But listening to what they have to say, and sometimes saying those same things back to them until the light comes on and they go, Oh, I know the answer to that problem. Maybe you haven't resolved it at all. But you listened to what they had to say. Now you are Christ's body and individually members of it, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 27 and 28. You are part of Christ's body. Individually, members of that body. Individuals make up the assembly that's here this morning. And when you leave this place, you are an ambassador, you are a preacher, you are a teacher of God's word. But when we come here, we enhance one another. I appreciate so much all the things that people do that we think are little things. I'll tell you, if you haven't been involved in some of the memorial services that we have here, you don't understand what work goes into those. But if you come and serve one time and realize all the dishes that have to be done and all the things that have to be served, and how to set up the tables, and how to get people through, and how to encourage people, and how to make coffee, oh, those are all simple things you say. Come and try it. Next time it's in the bulletin where you need some help, we need some help in a memorial service, come and be here. You will find out that there is so much talent by individuals in our congregation that enhance our community. At had a memorial service yesterday for a good friend of, of ours, and Dave and Christina. They were overwhelmed by the love that was shown by those who served them with simple things. May I get you a cup of coffee? May I help you with this? I see that you're having difficulty finding a place. Let me show you, there's a table over here for you to sit at. And those people stayed and visited and had the nicest visit about their loved one, Dan. But it was because of those who used their little, tiny, what they thought were tiny, spiritual gifts for the glory of God. Everything that you do and everything that you say has been enhanced by your spiritual gift that is given to you by God. Again, Paul says in our text, for just as we have many members in one body, is that true of your physical body? Yeah, there's many members. You've got fingers and toes and eyes and ears and a mouth. You have hair that grows on your head for some of us. For others, that's not as quite as prominent as it. Sorry, Jeff. Uh, quite as prominent as other things, but all of those things are parts of the body. You are part of the body, Paul says, for just as we have many members in one body, the body of Christ, and all the members do not have the same function, 
So we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members one of another. So when one hurts, we all hurt. When one is joyful, we're all joyful with them. When one is just having a difficult time, it's us that come alongside them and walk with them and try to encourage them. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. He's not talking about the church as a whole. He's talking about individuals. As a church is a body and has many members, you're part of that. The us there is you and it's me as I try to glorify God in all that I do. If you're able to prophesy, then we're to speak that prophecy of God's word. And we know that we don't prophesy today about what the things that they prophesied about in the Old and New Testament that Christ was coming. Because when he came, they didn't recognize him. But when they prophesied, they didn't even understand some of the things that they were saying, like Isaiah, Jeremiah, those other prophets. But their prophecy came true through the incarnation of Jesus Christ into the world. And every prophecy has been fulfilled. We find the answers in the New Testament and even some in the Old Testament, except for one. That's the second coming of Christ. So as we live our life, we're to be being prepared for that day. Maybe your gift is preparedness, just being ready, encouraging others to be ready. We know that our gifts are given to us by the Holy Spirit. What are you going to do with your gift? How are you going to enhance your gift this week? The only way I know to enhance it is to try to discover my gift, realize I've been blessed with the gift, and then find ways when I can use that gift for the glory of God. Not only for my brothers and sisters here in the church family, but also for those outside in the world. Your gift may just be driving to church on Sunday morning. And if a neighbor asks you, where do you go every Sunday morning? Well, we go to assemble together to give our corporate worship to God. And they're curious because they want to know why you are different. That may be your gift or part of your gift. Whatever your gift is this morning, God wants you to enhance it and to use it for his glory. And if you're not a Christian, now's the time to realize that God has blessed you with the opportunity to become a part of the body of Christ. To be able to live with him not only now, but throughout eternity. He asks you to come repenting of your sins, confessing his name before men. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And that's something you're going to do every day of your life. And as different times come, when maybe persecution comes, it's going to be up to us to stand up and say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and I follow in his footsteps. And then to be buried with him in baptism, to walk in a brand new life. A life where the Holy Spirit now gives you a gift to enhance your walk with Him. Whatever your need is this morning, Jesus invites you to come while we have to stand for